and also cancellation of hot lunch and snacks to the employees the productivity keep on increasing simultaneously mass interview program of 20000 individuals of the organization to know that whatever the expectation that is towards the organization in the minds of the employees there is no improvement with the productivity of the organization the productivity was normal there will be no quality of a product if we give more than the actual performance Hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all I am Mr Hemant Kumar from the Department of Commerce and Management Vidyashram First Grade College Mysuru the Temple of Excellence This is the session 4 of unit 1 of the subject principles and practice of management the name of the unit is introduction to the management In today's session this is the agenda of today's session we are going with the neo classical theories of management and also the modern theories of management in the previous session we already studied the classical theories of management in classical theories of management we gone through three aspects that is administrative management bureaucratic management and also scientific management in today's session we are going with two neo classical theories and two modern theories of management neo classical theories of management so as we know in the classical theories of management the classical theory totally focused on the management administration machinery and finance but here the neo classical theory it focused on human relations so this neo classical theory is also known as human relations theory neo classical theory of management is also known as human relation theory propounded by elton mio so this elton mio is also known as the father of neo classical theory of management he is the one who had contributed the concept of neo classical theories of management elton mio is recognized as a father of neo classical theories of management as we know he is recognized as a father of neo classical theories of management there are two approaches in the theory that is hawthorn experiment and management science approach so here elton mio had given two approach under the neo classical theory of management the first one is hawthorn experiment second one is management science approach let us study each and every concept individually hawthorn experiment what is this hawthorn experiment who had conducted this hawthorn experiment and where this hawthorn experiment had conducted in 1927 a group of researcher led by elton mio so this elton mio had led a group of researcher and this team of harvard business school okay so this team was from the harvard business school were invited to join in studies at the hawthorn workers of western electric company so this experiment was conducted in hawthorn works of western electric company it is a western electric company of elton mio he had conducted the experiment this company is located in chicago city of america according to hawthorn experiment the productivity of the employees is not the function of only physical conditions of work it is not only about the physical conditions of work and the money wages paid to them so whatever the efficiency or the effectiveness come from the workforce it is not only from the physical conditions of workers and not only from the money which is paid to the employees of the organization so, so there is something else behind the efficiency of work what is the thing that is behind the efficiency of the work productivity of the employees depends heavily upon the satisfaction of the employees in their working situation so it does not only depends upon the physical conditions of the workforce or the money or the wages paid to the employees of the organization it totally depends upon the satisfaction of the employees in the work situation according to this experiment according to this hawthorn experiment 
the efficiency of workforce is not only influenced by physical condition of work and money wages paid to the employees not only physical working condition of the workforce not only the monetary benefit that is given to the employees but also it depends upon the satisfaction of the employees in their work situation but not the monetary benefit that is given by the employer to the employees is not influence the workforce but the workforce will be influenced by satisfaction of employees in their work situation hawthorne experiment so here hawthorne experiment melton mio had conducted four experiment the first experiment is elimination experiment the name of first experiment is elimination experiment relay assembly test experiment second one the third one is interviewing program the fourth experiment is bank wiring test room experiment these are the four experiments that is conducted by elton mio so this is the first experiment that is conducted by elton mio that is elimination experiment how the experiment was conducted so what was this experiment is about it was about the elimination this experiment was conducted to know that is there any relationship between elimination and productivity this elimination is nothing but light elimination is nothing but so this is the experiment with light had conducted in the workforce of the organization so this experiment was conducted to know that is there any relationship between the intensity of light in the organization and productivity so how this experiment was conducted so firstly elton mio had increased the intensity of light in the organization firstly he did intensity of light was increased in the organization and he noticed the progress of the employees so the progress of the employees keep on increasing day by day so the progress of the employees keep on increasing day by day he noticed the change telling that if i increase the intensity of light in the workforce the progress of the employees keep on increasing day by day or the productivity of the employees keep on increasing day by day and in the second phase he had decreased the intensity of light in the workforce so in the second phase he decreased the intensity of light in the workforce so if he decrease the intensity of light in the workforce also the productivity keep on increasing so there is no changes with the productivity of the employees of the organization both in terms of increment of the intensity of light and also when he decreased the intensity of light so at the end he came to conclusion telling that so the intensity of light does not affect the productivity of the organization okay relay assembly test experiment this was the second experiment that is conducted by elton mio so what is this relay assembly test room experiment so elton mio led by the group of researchers they had conducted second experiment the second experiment was about physical working condition of employees this second experiment was conducted that is relay assembly test room experiment was conducted to know that whether there is a relationship between physical working conditions of the workers and productivity so here he conducted the experiment of the physical working condition of the employees so in the first phase he decreases the working hours of employees and also increases rest hours of the employees and also he provided snack and hot lunch facility to employees and he noticed the changes in productivity here the productivity keep increased after he decreased the working hours of the employees he increased the rest hours of the employees and also he provide hot lunch and snacks to workforce so in the second phase what he did he increased the working hours of the employees and rest hours of the 
uh, employees were decreased and he also cancelled the hot lunch and snacks that is provided to employees in the second phase. I repeat, Elton Mio in the first phase, he decreased working hours of the employees and increased rest hours of the employees and he provided, facilitated the employees by hot lunch and snacks in the first phase. What was the result? The productivity keep on increasing. In the second phase, what he did? So, he increased the working hours of the employees and rest hours of the employees get decreased and also he cancelled hot lunch and snacks to the employees at the second phase. Even in the second phase also, he noticed the difference that is the productivity keep on increasing day by day. So, at the end of the experiment, Elton Mio came to conclusion telling that there is no relationship between physical working condition of the employees and the productivity. So, this physical working condition of the employees does not affect the productivity of employees or productivity of workforce. That was the conclusion that is given by the relay assembly test room experiment. So, the physical condition of the workers does not affect the productivity of the employees. The third experiment is mass interviewing program. What happened in this mass interviewing program? In this mass interview program, so they had conducted the interview for 20,000 individuals. So, they had conducted the mass interview program. In the mass interview program, they had conducted the interview for 20,000 individuals. What was the intention of conducting the interview for 20,000 individuals? So, this experiment was conducted. So, this experiment was conducted to make the systematic study of the employee's attitude. So, to know the attitude of the employees, this experiment was conducted and also it revealed the meaning of working situation of the employees in the workforce. The researchers interviewed a large number of the workers, that is 20,000 workers within rigid to their operations, so on work, working conditions and supervision. So, they did the experiment on the working condition and the supervision that is the expectation of the employees of the organization. Initially, a direct approach was used whereby the interviewers asked questions concerned improvement by the managers and the researchers. The researchers observed that the replace of the work man was grieved. After conducting this experiment, the researcher came to conclusion telling that so he did not got any kind of conclusion in the experiment 3. So, this experiment 3 led the researcher to conduct one more experiment that is experiment 4 that is about the bank wiring test room experiment. So, in the experiment 3, the Elton Mio, he could not able to come to a single conclusion. So, hence that experiment 3 led Elton Mio to conduct fourth experiment that is bank wiring test room experiment. So, let us see. So, this experiment was conducted for 14 workers of the organization. After the experiment, the production records of this group were compared with their earlier production re records. So, after the productivity, so this record of production was compared with the earlier record of production. It was observed that the group evolved it, its own production norms for each individual worker which was made lower than who was set by the management. So, there was no efficiency. It was very normal or there is a lower in the productivity of the organization because of this workers would produce only that much thereby defecting the incentive system. So, for example, an individual worker, he can give the production of only 8 units a day means he can give only 8 units of production. What happens if we give 9 units or 10 units of production? So, there is no effectiveness in the workforce. So, there is no efficiency in the production or there may be some problem in the production means there will be no quality of a product if we give more than the actual performance. Those workers 
who try to produce more than the group norms were isolated, hushed or punished by the group. So those who workers who had not given the production, they were isolated and punished by the group just because of the reason that is they were not at all going to give the actual production that is expected by the organization. These are the four experiments that is conducted by Elton Mio as a Hawthorne experiment. So the first experiment that he had conducted regarding the intensity of light with the production. There is no relationship between the intensity of light uh, with the productivity. So he increased the intensity and he also decreased the intensity of light and he noticed no changes with the productivity of the workforce. So here the relay assembly test room experiment. This was the second experiment that is conducted by Elton Mio with the workforce to know the physical working condition of the employees. There is no relationship between the physical working condition of the employee with productivity. So he came to conclusion telling that if we give any kind of the facility that is very physical working condition, it may be hot lunch or the snacks facility. If we increase the working hours of the employee, if, if we also decrease the rest hours of the employees, also the productivity will be same. Means the physical working condition of the employees does not affect the productivity of employees whether if we facilitate by all the facilities if we won't provide any facility also they are going to give the average production according to second theory the third theory was mass interview program so they had conducted the mass interview program of 20,000 individuals of the organization to know that whatever the expectation that is towards the organization in the minds of the employees so this experiment led to conduct fourth experiment. So they could not able to come for any conclusion in the third experiment. So this third experiment led the Elton Mio team to conduct a fourth experiment. That fourth experiment is about the bank wiring test room experiment. This bank wiring test room experiment was conducted to 14 individuals, a group of 14 individuals of the organization. All the individuals are very friendly in the organization. This experiment was conducted to know that whether the incentive policy of the organization does affect the productivity. So the conclusion was no, the incentive or the payment of incentive to the workforce does not affect the productivity of organization. Hence a individual labor or a worker he can give his maximum contribution to the employees not just because of incentive that is paid to the employee but just because of the satisfaction internal satisfaction of the employee in the organization hence the conclusion of this Hawthorne experiment was so not only the physical working condition of the employees does not affect the productivity but the internal satisfaction of the employees or the organizational culture or organization environment affect the working condition of the employees if we provide the good working condition if we provide good environment to employees if we do satisfy employees of the organization they give good productivity that is the conclusion of this Hawthorne experiment let us go with the next concept that is management science approach the management science approach is also known as behavioral science approach in this behavioral science approach we are going to study the human resource behavior or behavior of the individuals of the organization focused on studying human behavior within the organization so as i said it is going to study the human behavior in the organization and aims to establish scientifically verifiable propositions for understanding the behavior. So it is going to study the scientifically verifiable preposition that is in human behavior. So it also draws the concepts from psychology, sociology and anthropology from the various aspects of organizational behavior. It also draws the information about psychology, anthropology and sociology. The core elements of the behavioral science approach includes the motivation, leadership, communication, group dynamics and participative management. These are all the things that it is going to focus on that is regarding the motivation, leadership, communication, group dynamics and the productive management. These aspects are conducted 
crucial in understanding and managing the human behavior with organization it is going to measure the human behavior in the organization overall it is nothing but measuring the human resource behavior in the organization so here we are going to study the various factors or the various functional areas of the scientific management theory factors of individuals so these are the it focus on individuals of the organization focus on individuals of the organization so as we know the neoclassical theories of management focused on two aspect one is the individuals of the organization and the group of peoples of the organization one the theory focused on the individual of the organization and also the group of peoples of the organization the first theory of neoclassical theory it focused on the group of peoples of the organization first one influence of social and the psychological factors so according to this scientific management approach is influenced by the social environment and the psychological aspect of the organization so it totally depends upon the psychology of the individuals of the organization and also the society that is surrounding the employees of the organization on which the employee get motivated towards from the social society and also the psychological condition human relations movement so according to this human relations movement so there must be a good human relationship between the individuals of the organization if there is a coordination if there is a proper cooperation between all the individuals of the organization the work can be effective and efficient neglect the group behavior this management science approach it had neglected the group behavior in the hawthorn experiment was conducted to know the group behavior of the individuals of the organization this scientific uh, management science approach was conducted to know the individual behavior of the organization development of the organizational behavior so it is also going to develop the organizational behavior of the employees by conducting the relevant training and development programs multidimensional and interdisciplinary nature so it have various dimensions and it is interdisciplinary nature the disciplines are various and also it is going to focus on the various dimensions of the organization contributes from the socialists and the psychologist so as we know it is going to focus on the social and the psychological factor it had contributed by the socialists and the psychologists that is about management science approach so this is a last theory of management so in the first theory of management it is completely focused towards management administration machinery and finance the second theory of management that is neoclassical theory of management it is going to focus on human resource relationship so according to the neoclassical theory of management it says that not only management administration machinery and finance is required to the organization and also human resource or human relation is treated as a resource to the organization which increases the efficiency of productivity of the organization so this is the third theory that is modern theories of management so it is recently this theories of management had developed so what is this modern theories of management is about the modern management theory offers the guidance on the practices you can apply within your organization it is regarding the practices that we can apply towards the organization to lead individuals and the process effectively so it is going to lead the process and the individuals effectively and efficiently this theory provides the several different approaches you can use to understand your business so it is going to give the several different approaches that we can implement to any kind of the business and how it operate so how it is going to operate when you understand these approaches you can use them to identify and work with the variety internal and external factors that affect the business so 
here when you work towards the when you apply this uh, modern theories of management to managing workforce so you can go through the various factors that is going to affect the business environment as we know there are two factors that is going to affect the business environment one is internal factor and another one is the external factors of the business the first theory is system theory of management what is this system theory of management is about so this system theory of management is about according to this system theory the management is a system so according to this theory the management is a system under each and every management there are subsystems let me give you example so production department sales department marketing department human resource department research and development department finance department so there are various departments in the organization these systems act as a sub systems of the organization so this system act as a sub system in the organization according to system theories of management so this system that is management completely depends upon the working of subsystems of the management the success of the management totally depends upon the subsystem that is the various departments or the various subsystems of the management and also these subsystems are interrelated with each other means it is dependent on each other i will give you an example so there is a department called finance department so without finance we cannot produce anything so there is a relationship between the finance and productivity so again after production so there is a department called sales department okay so if we produce the product so what is the use of producing the product without sales so there must be interrelationship between production and sales so there must be interrelationship between sales and marketing there is a relationship between again marketing and human resource and all the departments of the organization they are interrelated with each other okay so that is what this theory is going to tell that is the system theory according to the system theory of management all the management is considered as a system under each and every system there are number of subsystem of which the complete system is dependent on the subsystem the success of the management depends upon the subsystems or the various departments in the organization if all the departments of the organization are going to work efficiently and effectively so we can expect the success of the organization so there may be no success for the goals of the organization so that is what this theory is going to tell about the system theory of management sees the organization as the interconnected systems working towards the common goals so as we know they are going to say that this system is nothing but the management so this system is about the management there are various subsystems that is going to work towards the success of the management that is going to work towards reaching the goals of the management developed by the ludwig von bartley it shifts from the viewing organization as a machines to the holistic approach it is going to compare the management to the holistic approach departments are interdependent and changes in one can affect others so the department it is going to affect another department it is going to affect each other one department is affected by the another department that is subsystems the system is open receiving the inputs and producing output that 
impact the environment this approach assess the organization overall effectiveness and emphasizing the synergy between the subsystem so it is going to emphasize the synergy between the subsystems of the organization means all the departments of the organization benefits include the broader perspectives better decision making and this is the thing that we had studied in the system theory of management this theory they may ask for five marks in the final exam so simply if we go to the system theory according to this system theory complete management is a system so under each and every system there are sub system called the departments of the management there are various departments in the organization those departments are the sub system the success of the main system depends upon the sub system of the organization so if this sub system work effectively and efficiently there will be success in the management so we can say that this all the sub systems are interdependent on each other so one department is dependent on another department this is about the system theory of management this is the last theory the contingency theory of management so what is this uh, contingency theory is about what is this contingency so contingency is nothing but change contingency theory of management also known as the situational theory so according to this contingency theory of management we must change the strategies we must change the plans we must change the policies we must change the infrastructure so we must change the process in each and every step we must keep on updating the organization from one generation to another generation that is what this contingency theory is going to tell about so contingency means change we are not supposed to use the same technique in each and every situation we must change the technique as per the situation we must change the strategies as per the situation we must change the culture of the organization as per the situation acknowledge that there is no one size fit all approach to the management so we cannot apply all the approaches in a single situation or we cannot apply a single approach in all the situations of the management it emphasizes adapting leadership decision making based on the specific situations so it is going to tell that so it is regarding the leadership and the decision making on the specific situations so as we know a single formula no formula is used to solve all the kinds of problems no single formula is there to solve all the kinds of problems we are going to apply different kinds of formulas to solve different kinds of problems so it is in the same way this leadership also get updated from one generation it must be changing from one generation to another generation the leadership should never be static hence the leadership must be dynamic it must be changing from one situation to another situation managers must analyze the internal and the external circumstances and tailor their actions accordingly so they are going to tailor their actions accordingly according to this theory the managers cannot apply a same kind of strategy to solve all the kinds of the problems to all the project okay so they are going to make their own strategy based on the situation based on the condition okay so in the same way they are going to make tailor the external circumstances and their tailor activities and analyze the internal and the so before going to take the decisions in the management they are going to tailor the internal and the external circumstances and finally they are going to tailor the actions accordingly so according to the situation that they are going to take the decisions according to this theory the theory's history dates back to the mid 20th century when the resources observed that need for the customized solutions for different organization this theory was conducted in the 20th century okay when the situation was customized solution for the 
different organizations. So, this is the theory is about. So, overall, if we talk about the contingency theory of management, so there are various leadership styles. Okay. So, single kind of leadership style cannot be applied to all the kinds of organization. So, the leadership style can be applied based on the organization culture based on the organization based on the workforce of the organization and in the same way a single strategy is not be used to solve all the kinds of the problems in the organization it totally depends upon the actual problem that had occurred in the organization type of the organization and also it totally depends upon the situation in the next session we are going with the concept of the total quality management that is tqm learning organization and the concept of technology driven organization so these are the three concepts that we are going to study in the further session thank you